Interesting. Oh, yeah. that's great. Well, we are ready to start. We're ready to rock and roll here. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the UBC Learning Circle. For Tuesday, October 15th, my name is Crystal Morris. I am, I am the Aboriginal Education Coordinator. We are here in the beautiful downtown Vancouver on Musqueam Territory. Um, today, we are here with the Sauter School of Business, um, the Chinook um, Initiative, um, which is a part of the University of British Columbia. Um, right now, I'm actually going to turn the table over to Rick. Thank right. you for joining us. I <laughs> appreciate you know your scheduling time and your busy schedule to come join us today to talk about the Chinook program. So I'm going to turn it over All to right. you, Rick. Well, thank you for inviting <laughs> me. And oh, um, sorry, Zwistin. I'm sorry. Can you turn your mic off? Thank you. Thanks. And uh, feel free if you have any questions to just feel free to jump in. Uh, so because I don't mind taking questions at any time. What I want to do is uh, talk about the Chinook Initiative and give you a sense of what it is that we're doing in communities in British Columbia um, and give you a sense, uh, an opportunity to kind of ask questions and see if there's any opportunities for any, anybody in your community to be participating with, that, with us in that. So I'm going to just talk about the team quickly. Then I'm going to talk about our Aboriginal Management Program, our Chinook's Cousins Program, I'm going to talk about our Indigenous Business Network, which is working with students from colleges and universities across uh, BC and other parts of Canada. And then I'll show you some of our, our, our web assets that we've got uh, on, online because they can be a great resource for anybody in the community that's interested in business or education. And we use that to share a lot of information. All right. So the key, you know, my mandate is to facilitate Aboriginal engagement in business education studies um, because we believe that that's a really important part of, uh, of uh, um, getting communities to a point where they can be equal partners in terms of regional um, economic development opportunities. And uh, so that we, we do that um, from a provincial perspective and we have a bit of a Canadian reach on that. So ty typically we work with high school students, post-secondary students and senior Aboriginal leaders around facilitating their engagement. Now Chinook was founded in 2002, so we've been here for quite a while. There's no other organization like Chinook in North America. We're the only group that's doing what we're doing. Um, the reason we chose the name Chinook is because it, it allows us to, it represents what we do, is, which is bridge, and we bridge lots of different communities, we bridge lots of different, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I just like set the computer. It's okay. Um, we do, we bridge a lot of different aspects in, in terms of the work that we do. So I'm, uh, I'm Algonquin, I'm from the Mattawa North Bay Algonquin First Nation and uh, my PhD is in learning and in management. Um, I have a lot of experience around designing learning and teaching and learning activities and uh, um, I'm really passionate about that and that's why I'm with Chinook, I guess, because I'm passionate about the work that we're doing. Um, Danielle Levine is an associate director at Chinook and she's Métis and she did a lot of work with the uh, MNP around consulting with communities around some of their needs, mainly around the business side. Um, Miranda Huron is a program manager. She looks after C Chinook uh, cousins and scholars and she is also from the Mattawa North Bay Algonquin First Nation and uh, worked with the language and li linguistic anthropology is her degree. And so she's done a lot of work around language revitalization and uh, is, uh, was an Aboriginal success officer for uh, Algon Algonquin College in Ottawa before she joined us. And then Joe is, is uh, originally from the UK and he's our administrative coordinator and he's great. He keeps us all going. So everyone needs somebody like Joe. We do. <laughs> so ultimately Chinook is recognized as a pioneer and a leader in Canada. You know, our goals are to develop an Aboriginal cultural knowledge and teaching and learning context for everybody that we work with. So when we're working with high school students or post-secondary students or uh, you know, our senior Aboriginal leaders, what we're trying to do is bring an Aboriginal context and perspective to business education that you don't see in, in many of the uh, uh, regular business programs out there. So the way we do that is we bridge communities. So 
And we sit in, in between a lot of different uh, relationships. So for example, we work with different communities. We work with indigenous communities, business communities, so corporations and companies, student communities, and educational communities. So we, we, we do a lot of bridging in that. We make connections. We're very proactive in making sure everybody's talking to each other so that we're all working together. So we try to inc increase collaboration between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal businesses and students and educational communities. We get funding, so we're externally funded, and we try to, to put our funding through to all of these communities so that we can uh, have impact in terms of uh, facilitating Aboriginal engagement in business education. Um, all of the community partnerships that we develop are designed to sort of help us be much more effective in the work that we're doing, but also help us work on the community level and in the region. So although we're based in, in uh, Vancouver, we touch a lot of communities across the province and other communities in Canada. You know, ultimately what we want to do is increase Aboriginal presence and influence in business in Canada and in, in educational institutions. Uh, we think that there's a real need to have Aboriginal or Indigenous faculty um, and uh, values and knowledge that are being taught not only to Aboriginal students but also to non-Aboriginal students. We think that that's very important. Mm -hmm. And we want to promote respect and understanding um, among the communities for Aboriginal identity, culture, values and, and, uh, and our traditional knowledge and knowledge that we're developing now. So one of, the, we, one of the ways that we're able to be effective is that in British Columbia, we have an agreement with the 25 colleges and universities to, to work together to facilitate Aboriginal engagement. So that was driven before I came to Chinook. And it's important because what it meant was that these are all the colleges and universities in the province of BC. And we've all agreed that we want, that this is important and that we're going to work together to, to make this happen. And, um, and there are different ways that, that uh, each college and university is, is able to do that. And we kind of sit in the middle and help them wherever we can. And we pull out their students into some of our programs. And I'll, I'll speak more to that later. So fundamentally, we've got four regional partners. Um, UNBC, Thompson Rivers, uh, Vancouver Island University, and I would consider UBC one of our regional partners. The reason why I, I, I frame it that way is because Chinook is fundamentally institutionally neutral. We're not trying to recruit students for UBC or for the, for the Sauter School of Business. We, you know, for us, the success is you know, if UNBC has more Aboriginal students, that's great. You know, if Northern Lights College is able to have a program around uh, a certificate in management and leadership and we're able to help them do that, that's a success for us. You know, so for us, success is making sure that um, a any Aboriginal participant who wants to be part of a program, either credit or non-credit, if they're able to do it in the province of BC and we're able to facilitate that, that's a great thing. You know, so that means, um, you know, for example, that uh, we touch a lot of communities in the way that we do that. And I think the last number is around 132 communities in BC that we've touched in terms of the work that we're doing around this. So, um, you know, we're on the ground, we're doing lots of work. And what we try to do also is make sure that some of the students from high school, for example, get into our regional partners and, and uh, are able to experience what it feels like to be in a university. Because um, a lot of students are first generation. You know, I never had anybody in my family who went to school, so I had to figure it all out. It's tough. And so just getting into the institution and experiencing that and maybe meeting some faculty we find helps in terms of students deciding to go to college or university. That's great. I'm, gl I'm, gl I'm glad you brought that up because that is coming up in some future circles, the application process. How do you make an application mm -hmm. to apply? So there is a future cir uh, youth circle on that. Oh, well, okay. So Miranda is somebody who does that actually with our cousins, and so it would be good to oh, perfect. Really connect with Miranda. Okay, so we do have a question. Yep. Ken from School District. He's joining us from School District 71. All right. Welcome, Ken. There's a question here on Adobe Connect. Does facilitating Aboriginal engagement mean reaching out to high school programs where Aboriginal students are enrolled, or does it mean collaborating with Aboriginal education programs exclusively? Well, what it means both, actually. So I'm going to walk in. So what I'll do is let me walk through the presentation a bit more. I'm going to talk about Chinook Cousins. Mm -hmm. Chinook Cousins, we actually go in and, and work with high schools from grade 9 to 12. And so I'll, I'll, talk, I'll speak to that a little bit. Um, so just to give you a little bit more information, uh, these are our region these are partners that we work with in terms of some of the activities that we do. So First Nations Financial Management Report, can do AFOA BC, uh, Industry Council, Sauter, and ANSI. Um, we're 
externally funded. So our funding comes through different organizations. And so TD Canada Trust is a major funder. Nexon is a funder in Canada. Sauter School of Business funds us. ConocoPhillips and ANSI has given us some funding. So a lot of our funding is ex externally based. Now to answer your question around how do we do this, we have three pillars. Um, and the three pillars are uh, the Aboriginal Management Certificate Program, which we focus on mainly uh, people who want to be uh, Aboriginal participants who want to be uh, entrepreneurs or already in communities having to make decisions around finance or accounting or businesses in their communities. So that program's focused on um, providing them with the skills and capabilities that they, they'll need. And, and I'll speak more to that later. Uh, Chinook Scholars, which is also our Indigenous Business Network, where we provide access to um, two gatherings a year to uh, roughly 30 Aboriginal students, post-secondary students, studying in colleges and universities across the province. And again, I'll speak to that a bit more later. And then Chinook Cousins, where we actually go into high schools and regions and do workshops with students. And what we do is we actually talk about um, how do you start applying? How do you think about scholarships? Uh, what are the programs that are out there from a business perspective if you're interested in? What does it mean to study business? Um, and we work through that. And typically we're bringing uh, quite a few different schools together uh, who have Aboriginal students who want, who are interested in that. Um, we, all, we generally will work with our, our regional partners and we'll do it. So we do it at Thompson Rivers. We've done it at Vancouver Island University, UNDC. But we, uh, we also do it with some of the colleges in other universities and I'll speak a little bit more to that in, in a few minutes. Okay. Does that work? That works. That works. So quickly, um, the Aboriginal Management Certificate Program. Now, what that is fundamentally, what that's designed to do is to give is to provide skills and capabilities around business, so that whether you're an entrepreneur or you want to start a business or you're having to manage businesses in your communities, the Aboriginal Management Certificate Program is designed to give you those skills. So we look at HR, we look at entrepreneurship, accounting, uh, financial management, marketing and operations, business strategy and planning, communications and business leadership. And we do that with, uh, with an Aboriginal context and perspective. And so we bring in uh, Aboriginal leaders, Aboriginal entrepreneurs as part of that, but we also use Sauter's faculty to teach that. So we're getting a, a great balance of some of the leading thinkers and teachers within the Sauter School of Business and some of our leaders in our communities around mm -hmm. business. Um, and we, we try to make sure that there's a real strong focus on Aboriginal context and perspective in that. The Aboriginal Management Program is about 150 hours a time, but the key to that is you, anybody who participates, they come into Vancouver for about four days a month and they do it from February to May and then graduate, grad, graduations wow. in May. And so the key, the, the key about the Aboriginal Management Certificate Program is that it, uh, it allows you to stay in your community and it allows you to continue to work while, <coughs> while you're upgrading your skills, right? Mm -hmm. And that's important because we don't want to pull people out of the community. We don't want you to have to quit work, but we, we want to be able to give you skills that you can bring back the next day and start applying or using. Um, so some quick facts. Since the AMP was introduced in 2007, we've had 129 graduates, uh, mainly female, um, 82 female. 47 male. Uh, we, with this program, we've uh, touched 78 communities in five provinces. So it's been pretty significant in terms of the reach that we've had with this program. And last year was the, the most successful program we've had to date. Um, the, the approach that we take around that is that, uh, is that it's important to, to take a critical approach to thinking about a business. And so instead of just having people do a business plan and that's what you're doing, we actually focus more on what you have to do before you do the business plan, which is all the critical thinking that in, that's involved in either thinking about your business or the operations that you're in. And then the end point is that we work with something called the business generation canvas and that you present that. Um, but the key is to be really critical and be thinking about how do you create a business and how are you successful in making some of the decisions that you have to make before you actually write the business plan. Because if you're too focused on a business plan, you're not really focusing on making the decisions around the business that you need to think about. So we do have a question. Yep. What are the prerequisites for AMP? Prerequisites are, um, you know, hopefully high school, but that's not necessarily, you know, we look at your CV. So we look at your CV, we look at what you've been doing in, in for the last three to five years. Um, 
we look at where are you coming from and what are you trying to do. And so typically you have to apply and let us know what you're thinking about in terms of the program and how that will uh, apply now. So for example, if you're, in, if you're working in economic development and you've got a role that's around decision making and you need to upskill or think about getting better skills, then that, you know, it's a pretty good chance that we're going to take you because you're already in a role where you need to apply this information and have it. If you're somebody who's an entrepreneur who maybe has worked in the community for three, or five, three to five years or mm -hmm. worked somewhere else, then we're going to look at your application. We also ask for letters of recommendation and then we're going to make a decision on that. We try not to be so fixed on like hard, hard and fast uh, um, uh, acceptance because everybody's story is different and everybody's journey is different. And what we're trying to do is give you the skills and capabilities to, to step up and to be able to do this. And so every application is looked at individually. Mm -hmm. um, and then the key is funding too. Are you is it going to be funded? You know, if you're able to fund it, that's great because we we can fund some applications but not all of them. So funding mm -hmm. will be important. Does that help? Yes, Ken. Does that help answer your question? Thank you. And it's also good to have a bit of math, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. But but you know we we try to help you work through that as well. And so I just put a bit of uh, some sort of student accomplishments. Typically, when students uh, take the Aboriginal Management Certificate Program, some of them will actually go on and apply to do a BCom. Some of them have gone on to do an MBA, so they use the program as a way to help them get ready for an MBA. Some have gone into leadership positions in their communities, and others have started businesses. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot, of, a lot of success that comes out of that for us in terms of the program. That's great. And then some of the notable alumni, and there's more notables too, I'm sure, but this will give you a sense of who's been taking the program um, in terms of, uh, you know, recently in the last few years. So there's a lot of, um, uh, a wide range of different kinds of people who are taking the program, but they all focus on the need to have business skills to either build their own business or build businesses in their communities and to sustain that. Well, well, that's great because um, I was actually at the Aboriginal Business Award evening, I think it was like three years ago, and there were so many young high school students up and coming that were mm. starting like um, innovative um, tutoring ideas yeah. or they were running with an idea and then just going with it. Mm -hmm. So. Um, enhancing their skills in that yeah. respect as well too. And it's important, you know. It and, is. And I think the strength of this program is that it doesn't pull people out of the community. You can still stay where you mm -hmm. you live, you can still be in your job, and then you can just make the time to come out take a few time, three days a month for four or five months and learn mm -hmm. the program. That's what's important about that program. That's amazing. Um, yeah, so some more a notable alumni economic development officers. So, I mean, it's had quite the reach in terms of the program. And some of the co co comments around the program is that, you know, people are pretty enthusiastic. They get out there, they feel like they've gotten the skills that they need in the short time that they've been together with us. And then, you know, a lot of our students stay in touch with us, so, uh, or with the faculty, mm -hmm. sometimes when they're starting the businesses or if they have any questions. And usually the faculty are very open to do that. So Chinook Cousins. Uh, so Chinook Cousins is uh, what we want to do is we want to get into high schools because we know that it's important to give uh, students an understanding of uh, what, are bis what is business studies or to even introduce it to some students because some students don't understand. They need a reason to, to graduate. That's been our experience. And you know, if we're able to give them some reason to graduate, for example, like they can do entrepreneurship or business or management, then that's a great thing. And so we go into high schools, and we usually bring in a few high schools together to do our cousins' workshops. And we talk about uh, what are the programs out there that are related to business. And we talk about programs all over the province. So we're not just talking about um, our program, but we're talking about pro programs that are in their region or in their communities that they can start to think about. That gives them a reason to be thinking about really being successful in mm -hmm. high school and, and uh, graduating. So we started Cousins in 2004, and we work with grades 9 to 12. And um, the whole idea is that we, we talk about, uh, again, Aboriginal context and perspective on business. And then we start talking about the skills to be able to apply to programs, apply for scholarships, and, and all of those things. So 
it's a, it's a really important program. We think it's important that we get in there early and we're spreading the word on that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to talk about Chinook scholars later, but our scholars are post-secondary students and they're involved in the Cousins program. So either in their, their institution, their college or university, they're organizing it and they're going to facilitate it. And so there, it's actually our scholars that are going in as role models and they're doing a lot of the work in terms of doing that. And so what we try to do is create that, 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 uh, you know, that connection between the students who've already done it and their journeys, because they all have a different story of how they got there, mm -hmm. and then the students who are coming up behind them and make those connections within the communities and within the regional regions that they either come from or where they're studying. Mm -hmm. um, so they benefit from the workshops that we deliver, and it's in their communities, in their region, and that's again done by the, our staff. We bring in guest speakers and industry experts, depending on where we are, and um, sometimes TD Canada Trust will want to be part of that, or some of our funders want to be part of that, just because they want to be engaging. And they're coming, our, our funders, I find, are coming from a good place in terms of wanting to engage. Uh, all they want to do is, is provide opportunities, and I know that TD Canada Trust wants to hire, and they want to hire in the north and they want to hire all over the province and so they're, that's why they're with us and, and partnering with us. And so they, where they're coming from is they just want to start talking to high school students because they want to start communicating what are the opportunities for you in terms of that. And the same with our other partners. Mm -hmm. um, key to, to, to what we do is uh, making sure that students understand the importance that uh, business education can have for themselves or for their communities, right? Because sometimes students also don't want to leave their communities and think, well, what's business going to do for me? And so somebody will say, well, I want to be a truck driver. And we go, okay, but we know that, uh, I don't know, Nexon is in the north and they need service organizations. And so you may be a truck driver, but maybe five years from now you're going to have seven trucks. You're going to be managing that because you've got a business with Nexon that has to service something for them. Mm -hmm. And so then you need business skills. And so we give them, we try to give them a, a bigger sense of what it is they could be doing. Right, mm -hmm. and put that in the context of business and the community. And then we give them information about colleges and universities and uh, provide them with access to that. Um, so we've talked about all this. It's around early engagement. We do some skills development around that, self-advocacy. So how can they access student support services and promote successful outcomes? And Miranda does a lot of the work with our cousins, um, and she's great. And um, she would be the person that you'd want to talk to or contact if you want to have a workshop in your region. Mm -hmm. We've already, if you go to our website on under Chinook Cousins, you'll see the workshops that we've already organized. And, and they're already up there and posted. Some quick facts, you know, since 2006, we've had 664 cousins from 37 high schools across British Columbia. Uh, last year was 125 cousins from 20, and then, or sorry, the year before. And then last year we did 209 high school students from 29 high schools across BC, Alberta, and the Northwest Territories. Um, in 2009, we had our first Chinook cousin that became a scholar. That's a great thing for us because we met Jamie Harris as a high school student, and she was a cousin, and then she was accepted to be a Chinook scholar. And so we're starting to see the benefits of the work that we're doing in high schools and students starting to come into, the, into programs and then applying to be a scholar. And she's applied to gain this year to be a scholar. And then just some quick uh, commendations, you know, from Chinook Cousins. You know, this is awesome. I now know how to apply for scholarships. That's important. That is. It's very important. That is you very, know? very important. Um, and so, you know, uh, again, Miranda does great work w with the Cousins program, and we do that with our partners and with colleges and universities because we think it's important for students to be in the high schools and, and, and getting, or sorry, to be into colleges and universities in their region so they can have that experience and walk through those doors and feel comfortable and good about that. Mm -hmm. Preparing for success, supporting them in their success, yes. So the Chinook Indigenous Business Education Network is kind of the umbrella term for what we do with our post-secondary students. Now this picture here is, uh, we did an ITREC, so we did an international trip with, uh, with uh, some of our scholars and we went to Ethiopia and taught Aboriginal entrepreneurship to Ethiopians. Wow. Um, for a week and then we toured uh, in northern Ethiopia. So what we're trying to do is, is provide different kinds of opportunities for our, our post-secondary students. That's amazing. Um, do yep. the cousins ever bring high schoolers to UBC? Yes, uh, we have a UBC, we, yeah, in, the, in our, in our uh, longhouse. Um, 
I don't know what the date is, but yeah, we do bring them to UBC for one uh, once a year, and it's usually the regional ones. So it's usually you know students who are in Vancouver or uh, surrounding regions that we bring in, mm -hmm. because we're very regional in how we approach our cousins. <laughs> Ken says I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, invite yourself. Feel free. Um, you're always welcome to come to any of our events. Um, around the cousins, you want to speak to Miranda, and her email address is Miranda, M-I-R-A-N-D-A, dot Huron, H-U-R-O-N, at Chinook, so C-H-N-O-O-K, dot U-B-C, dot C-A. C-H-N-O-O-K. C-dash. Oh, C-dash. C-H-dash, N-O-O-K, dot U-B-C, dot C-A. And her information's on our website as well. He's a great party crusher. <laughs> <laughs> always, you know, always feel free. Uh, so the Indigenous Business Network, we've got on our website, you can actually sign up if you're an Aboriginal business student. So we've got over 200 students who've signed up in, in BC uh, and in, in Alberta as well. Um, and the, the website gives them information around sort of business news, Aboriginal scholarships, the events that were happening. Sometimes we have, uh, like AFOA will have a few seats in some of their workshops and they'll ask us to give it to our scholars. Mm -hmm. And so we'll put that information out. Um, we provide the insurance, sometimes we'll do bursaries for tutor support just for part-time students because mm -hmm. well, most of what we do is for full-time. And then we do internships. And so if somebody wants to apply to be a scholar, they need to join our network. And uh, so the Chinook Scholar is basically it recognizes full-time Aboriginal business students who have met or exceeded our values around achieving contribute. So when they do an application, it's for a scholarship, and the scholarship is $2,000. It also gives them a one-year membership at CANDU. Um, we have two gatherings a, a year in the province of BC. One is always at UBC, and that'll be in November, and the other one is somewhere in the province. So this year it'll be at Thompson Rivers University. And so they get all their expenses paid to go to these two gatherings, which are a Friday, Saturday, and half a Sunday. And uh, the gatherings are designed to bring them together to talk about identity and culture and Aboriginal values, but to start also bringing much more of an Aboriginal context to the studies, the business studies that they're having in their home communities. And so we'll bring in, again, Aboriginal business leaders, Aboriginal business people, mm -hmm. uh, community leaders to talk about their experience. But the value there is that they're, crea they're creating a network that supports each other and, and helps in terms of success. And if students are struggling in, high, in, in university or, or college, then they can draw on their network for support. And so we create a really tight alumni group of Aboriginal scholars. And the Chinook scholars are being recognized as future leaders now. And it, it's, a, it, it's becoming a, um, uh, uh, um, recognized that to, to be a Chinook scholar is to be somebody who's got a future as a leader in their communities. Mm -hmm. So it's been really important in the work that we've done around that. And so to, so to you know, right now, we're actually accepting scholars, uh, applications for Chinook scholars from across the province. This year we're going to have five Aboriginal students from Calgary who are going to be part of our Chinook mm -hmm. scholars. So we'll probably have around 25, 20 to 25 from BC and five from Calgary. Um, when you become a scholar, you're also, you know, when we have the international opportunities, you have priority to be participate in that. You have priority to be part of the internships that we set up, and uh, you get free tickets to certain events that we get that. Um, we provide support around career counseling, um, biography and CVs, and uh, we give them a reference letter because most of them are going to be participating in Chinook's Cousins. And so, mm -hmm. They're participating in our gatherings and then our co in our cousins program. So we're able to give them uh, recommendations that actually are real. And that makes sense because we've had uh, pretty close interaction with the students. And um, we find that that's important. And then in the past, we've done some support for math or financial tutoring if they need to, to do that in tour for success. Some quick facts. We've had 178 Chinook scholarships that, that have been awarded since 2007. So that's 2,000 each. So that's... A lot of a lot of funding going out. 109 mm -hmm. scholars from um, across BC from 21 post-secondary institutions. So we've pretty well hit two thirds, or more than two thirds. 21. Yeah, yeah. We've hit almost every institution in the province of British Columbia. Um, 45 students have had uh, received scholarships twice, and they're never guaranteed a scholarship. They always have to reapply. Um, and then I've just broken down where where some of the the 
bigger universities have had, or the, the larger uh, scholarship, more people have had scholarships, so UBC, Vancouver, uh, Okanagan. Uh, Vancouver Island University has been very prolific around getting scholars. So. Mm -hmm. um, but as you can see, it's, it's spread around the province, right? And that's our values are around that we're not just working in the south, we're working in the province. That's great. And this is just showing some of the institutions that had uh, scholars last year. So they're all colleges and universities, and we go cross across the gamut. Mine's, mine's just, okay, let's see if it's going to go. Oh, I just got logged out somehow. <laughs> let's see. Yeah, here, it's a sec. Okay, oh, there we go. There we go. It's Windows 8. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, I know what it's saying, yeah. <laughs> and again, uh, this year, these were the, 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 the companies that we did internships in. So RBC, TD Canada Trust, or job placements. Uh, Van City, we've just done a second one now. First Nations Health Authority, we've placed a couple of students in careers, Polygon Danton. So, you know, and we're, we're trying to move that to cover the whole province. And so what, right now, most of them are in the lower mainland. TD Canada Trust, I'm sure, would do something in the north if there was an opportunity for students to do that. And some of our other institutions would look at that. And we would be looking to local businesses at some point to be doing that as well. I'll have to connect you with Revenue Canada because sure. they were all over the province trying to recruit internships. They should be talking and to they, us. And they had a presentation last year, yeah. and it's really good that we connect you to them because they had low applications in, um, I think it was the North and Vancouver Island. Yeah. But of course, they were laid at the pro the promotion. Yeah. So it's good to have those links to you and make that connection because they are very welcoming for um, having well, those partnerships. That's great for us to know because. Yes. Um, uh, that we spent that we spent a lot of time around the internships, and it's something you you know a lot of companies think you just throw the internship out and people will apply. It doesn't yes. work like that. Mm -hmm. You know you kind of have to go in there. We work with all the organizations to help them in terms of how they set it up and how they think about it. But then we also source a lot of the students, so we're pretty proactive around mm -hmm. identifying students who would be appropriate, like for Deloitte or TD or Van City, mm -hmm. because we think it's important to match the students. Up. And That's so, great. yeah. So that. we, so we, we do more than just uh, announce that. We actually go in and, and we're very proactive around making the linkages, and then managing that. Um, I just put a couple of commendations here, just from our students. Um, you know, so that'll be that. That provides you with some kind of background on the on the, uh, on the students' experience. Um, you know, and I would say that. Uh, so when we look at the three pillars, you know, the success we had is, is that the three pillars are three generations, right? We're looking at three different kind of pathways to education and experiences with education. And so it makes a lot of sense that we need to have three pillars because we have uh, students in the Aboriginal Management Program who could never have finished high school or couldn't because of other reasons. Um, you know, we have students now in who are able to finish high school and are successful, and we have to, to approach that quite differently. And then we've got students who are already into university and colleges, and again, it takes a, we need to approach them all very differently. But in the work that we're doing, we hit three generations, or more sometimes, depending. Our oldest scholar, I think, was uh, 55 or 60, and our youngest scholar, so that's our post-secondary students, was around uh, 19. So you see the age range. And that's an, another important thing, is that you don't need to be 22 to get a Chinook scholarship. You need, just need to be studying at a post-secondary institution at full time, and you can apply. And then we look at the contributions you've made to your community. We look at the achievements you've had. We look at you, where you've come from, mm -hmm. and your background and your journey, and then we, we make a decision on that. Any questions just around the scholars or the cousins or the uh, um, our Aboriginal management program? Somebody is typing, but okay. it'll be a few minutes here. I'll wait two seconds. That's great. Business serves a lot of purposes. I know that's my background, and I've actually it's taken me into different areas, economic development, housing, um, band administration, office management, and I know it served me well when I went into the United States, but carrying on mm -hmm. that education, you know, a program like this is... It's just, you know, it's... Um, well, even in healthcare. So and I've been in healthcare, you know, yes, yeah. health director. So it helps in terms of that. 
Um, so, Jane is asking, will we be able to get all your information on the Chinook data? Uh, you'll have okay. a copy. You can get a copy of this presentation. It is on, it is, they can download it on the right-hand side of the screen. It's a PDF, right? Yes. That you can upload the file, Jane, and you'll be able to download the presentation. This is upload file, and you will have all that data. So, if, are there any other questions? Um, there is somebody typing. Okay. That, uh, well, I'll move on, and then just feel free to, to, to ju jump in. What I wanted to point out is that um, we have a significant presence on the web as well, um, and you're able to access information or join us in different ways, depending on how you want to engage with Chinook. <coughs> um, so one is our website, so which is www.chinook.org. Right now, we've got over 200 Aboriginal business students who signed up to the network because they're either wanting to apply for, to be a Chinook scholar or they, they're interested in some of the work that we do. Um, we use that, this website as a way to promote some of the work that we're doing, but it also tells you when we're having our scholars um, uh, you know, uh, events or when we're recruiting for Chinook scholars. It also says when the events are for our cousins' events, and so we try to keep that fairly up to date. Um, and so we have news and profiles. We're going to have eventually we've uh, we're going to have a leadership board, which are it's going to be interviews of uh, right now we've got interviews of 28 leaders in British Columbia that our Chinook scholars did last year, and we're going to do that again this year. So by the end of next year, we should have about 50 interviews of leaders in communities across British Columbia. And leaders are elders. They're they're anybody that our students identify as leaders. So mm -hmm. they they're not necessarily an elected official. That's right. That it's somebody in the, the community who right. could be it, taking on and volunteering yeah. that they've identified. Exactly. And, and we think that's important because our belief is that uh, leadership is is more than just being elected or more than just being in a leadership position, but we all have leadership in ourselves and we need to share our stories around uh, how we've been leaders. Okay, there is a question for clarification. So Ken is asking, um, the Cousins program was at my school about five years ago, and the students had to create a marketing strategy and a video commercial for a pizza product. Yep. The kids loved it. I am kind of unclear as to the events listed at your website. It doesn't seem like your program does that. Please advise. Yeah, we, so we aren't doing that right now because what we wanted to focus on, so we shifted our focus a bit on into the more the application process and the information process to start helping build skills. Um, so it is different in that we're not shooting those videos anymore, but we are engaging them. And so it will be more than just like a classroom event that's a bit of a download. It's much more, it will be engaging, but we're focusing on some of the skills and capabilities that they'll need to move on to apply um, and some of the information that they're going to need to be able to do that. Does that make sense? Yes. And, you know, you can also talk to Miranda uh, if you want more information. And, you know, we're always willing to look at uh, creating a custom event, if that's if we're able to do that, because we've done that in the past. We've had communities bring us in, um, but they want us to do it in a particular kind of way. So they want uh, uh, particular activities that they want to do, and we'll we're more than willing to do that if if, uh, if the funding and the resources are there. So mm -hmm. we've uh, done that in some of the remote communities. Okay. Oh, wait, no. The event at Vancouver Island University looks more like a one-day field trip. Is there a cost to this one-day activity? If so, how much and when do I apply? Is that for Cousins? Uh, I th think so, cousins, yes. Cousins is free. We don't charge anything. You just have to go with your school. So this, if you want to participate as a school, then you contact Miranda and ask to participate. So we like to bring as many students as we can together, and so we encourage it. We encourage uh, district, school districts and, and high schools to uh, to be a part of that. Good. He's so it's all free. That. Just he, get the students there. Yeah, he's going to do it. When is the firm deadline to apply? So I guess contact contact Miranda because we're we're we we're, we're always putting these things together, but we fixed some dates already. Mm -hmm. So any dates that you're seeing on the website, it's because they're already booked and we're ready to go. Okay. And you can always join any of those events. Okay, that's great. Um, so th this is our website, and feel free to jump in with questions. I'm just showing you some of the other things that we've got. We have a presence on LinkedIn, which is our Chinook Indigenous Business Network. 
Right now we've got about 576 professionals in our group. Um, the, we use this as a way to share information around indigenous business. So lots of articles, lots of stories. Um, sometimes we're reached, people in our group reach out to us for uh, jobs for our students or for you know, possible internships. Um, and then sometimes we draw on our community to be speakers in terms of the LinkedIn side. And so it's a great way for people if they just want to be more passive and in the background, but see some of the stories that are going around about business in Canada that has an Aboriginal focus, then you can just monitor that and be a part of that group. And uh, um, it's very easy. You don't have to participate. You can just be a lurker. It's fine. I'm comfortable with that. Uh, another uh, website we've got is um, our Facebook site. We've got a lot of lot of students there and, and lots of other people. We've got 172 right now. And again, we use that as a way to share opportunities, so job opportunities, uh, internship opportunities. And we, we post anytime that we're recruiting for scholars or for anything else that we're doing. So we use that as a, as a platform, again, for communicating across. And so typically, we have news about other nations uh, around culture, around entertainment, around business. There's lots of different information we push out on our, on our Facebook site. Um, Can non-Aboriginal students attend the Chinook events and activities? In okay. Cousins uh, or in general? I think in general. Um, well, we've been focused on Aboriginal students. Um, I, my feeling is I, I come from an inclusive place. Mm -hmm. so. Um, on a scholar side, no, because it's focused, our mandate is for Aboriginal students to, to for scholars on that. Um, but in terms of high school students, in the cousin side, yeah, that's not a problem. I'm, I'm pretty, we're pretty inclusive around that. So if, if there are non-Aboriginal students who want to be part of that, then that's fine. Okay. You know, and we, we're more than willing to um, have that conversation as it comes up. Mm -hmm. okay. But my mandate is around facilitating Aboriginal engagement in this. Um, this is our Twitter site, so we've got 1,002 a, a followers from across Canada and some from the States. Um, and again, it's another platform that we use to push out information and to share information to our network. Um, we use that again for recruitment and marketing and promotion. So, you know, if you're signed up to any of these, these you're going to be able to uh, be in touch with Chinook um, in different ways. Okay, so Ken is making a statement here. Which is great. Yep. What kind of auditorium do you have? I think I could get a pretty great group to the VIU event. Um, we're, uh, I think we're doing it in the their longhouse, their Aboriginal house on at the college. So um, I think what we, it's probably good to connect with uh, Miranda and see how what the numbers look like. If we need to move it to a bigger place, we will. We that's great. I mean that makes me excited. That's great, Ken. Thank you. Right on. So Miranda, we need to connect with Miranda. She's up north today. Um, and then sort of the final thing is we try to get photos up on all of the things that we do. So if you look, this is our Flickr account. Um, and this, these, the photos that you're seeing here are mainly from our graduation ceremonies. So when a Chinook scholar graduates from their college or university, they graduate there, but they also come in May and they graduate from our, with our Chinook Scholar mm -hmm. program. And so it's usually our Aboriginal Management Certificate program um, participants who are, who are graduating and our Chinook Scholars. And that's a great family event and it's a great event to start celebrating um, uh, all the success that we've had. And so on Flickr we capture those photos. And so, it, you know, you can have a look at Flickr. It'll, it'll have uh, photos of... Uh, some of our cousins' events. It'll have photos from our graduation, our Aboriginal Management Certificate program. You'll be able to get a sense of what that feels and looks like. And that's all I've got. So open to anything. Any questions? <laughs> There's any others? We have the. All right. Are there any questions up there at Zwiston? Zwiston, I always have to get my tongue around that. Sorry. It's Hoisten. Zwiston. Hoisten. 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 I'm not sure. We can't. No we questions can't here. No questions. It's good. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Stephen just has to switch it back now.
Okay. Oh, just, he I is out of the office. Okay. Okay. He's, he's monitoring it. But we can hear each other. That's a good thing. Um, so Ken is saying, this was very informative. I will be bringing students to Nanaimo. Okay, great. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> that's great. It's been a great, that, that's what we're all about here yeah. is networking and bringing, um, being the link to communities. Uh, I'm much like great. you is the more we're out there and, you know, yeah. building capacity in communities is what we try and do here at the um, UBC Learning Circle. I mean, that's what we're about, embracing community solutions. So I think that's right. great. You know, in any way we can help, feel free. Mm -hmm. It is exciting. I know uh, probably about a year ago I actually had a look at the Chinook program and, you know, personal interest, and I told you about my yeah. brother asking me for further information about it. So definitely people are looking at the program and wanting to become involved and wanting further information about it. So that's what we're trying to do here as well is highlight what is available for uh, building capacity in First Nations communities and Aboriginal organizations. And this is a great way you know, for us to connect and get the resources out to community. Um, another thing, oh, wait, Ken has a question. Yep. Why do you think more women are taking Aboriginal business courses than men? This is actually, uh, I think, a, a, a larger trend. Um, I think more women do more education than men do in terms of Aboriginal men versus women. That's a trend I see across, across all aspects of uh, education. That's actually what we, we see now, you know, we can open that conversation because that, that was interesting as well because I um, had a partnership with our education uh, department when I was the health director of my own community and that's what we found with any of the um, programs that we had put on in community as well. It was seemed to be predominantly female and mm -hmm. we were actually really having to go door to door and knock on the doors of the young men and saying, you know, you're welcome to attend some of these personal development or career choices yeah. or um, as well and really encourage them and to make them feel, well, what we were trying to do is make them, you know, feel valued and um, that this wasn't just a, for, for the women in our community. But, we'll, but, but the trend that we were seeing is the young mothers Right, the young single mothers were emerging, and I'm not sure if Schwiston has had that same experience um, in their community, but we did see that trend, Ken, and I'm not sure why, but... Um, well, I think it's also a trend in non-average education, too, is mm -hmm. uh, that there uh, tend to be uh, more women as well, mm -hmm. so I, I think, it, but it's more amplified in Aboriginal communities, mm -hmm. that's what I've seen. See, and, and what's interesting, I've worked in a couple of different fields. Now, when I, be, when I was a part of the Aboriginal Financial Officers Association and went to um, those meetings and meetings for administ administrative meetings across the province, it was um, highly male-dominated as opposed to the health side. When mm -hmm. I walked in a room, it was 90% female. Now it's kind of evening out. I haven't been to, you know, administrators or yeah. AFOA if that is balancing out more. But in the health field, it's balancing out a lot more that there seems to be more males, um, health directors, I increasing number of male particip participating, whether it's a community health representative or health directors. We're seeing a shift there. Um, I'm just noticing it just by observation, walking into Gathering Wisdom and different events of that nature. And I'm not sure if that's the trend on Well, that side. I mean, I would say that in terms of our scholarships, it's the same, more women than men. Mm -hmm. um, right now, it's probably three to one, two to one, two to, two to three to one right now, in terms of our applications. Mm -hmm. and so. Yeah, it's hard to under. It's hard to know why. Yeah, the trending. I. It would be interesting to have somebody. You know, it could be around uh, uh, opportunities and working and, and different mm -hmm. trends around that. You know, in some of the communities. So Ken is asking, what age or grade is the Chinook cousins designed for? Grade twelve. Nine to twelve. Nine to twelve. And he also says the entrepreneurship is inherently uh, a risk-taking venture. Are Aboriginal Canadians more or less likely? than our American friends to take a business risk? Oh. Um, just in general, entrepreneurship. But I think in the U.S. it's very different. Uh, it's a different situation for entrepreneurship in terms of, uh, for lots of reasons around uh, venture capital and money that's available. 
can Canadians in general tend to be more conservative around investments and around um, entrepreneurship than Americans. There's a lot of what I call silly money in the U.S. that uh, people throw into opportunities um, that you don't see in Canada. Uh, but what I do see is that there are a lot of communities, uh, First Nation communities, Aboriginal communities in Canada, who want to be more entrepreneurship, more, to want to be more entrepreneurial, and so are supporting that and are starting to invest in entrepreneurial op uh, opportunities in their communities or with individuals in the communities. And so we're starting to see that. So as money comes into the community, that there's some investment in entrepreneurship or some investment in businesses that are more entrepreneurial. And then different communities take the outcomes of those in different ways. They either reinvest in the community or they, they put it into uh, investing in more business or, mm -hmm. or culture or whatever. So, so I don't know. That's kind of my, my sense. It's tough all around to be entrepreneurial. <laughs> <laughs> um, have any of the UBC Business School grads ever been on CV's Dragon Den, LOL? Oh, you know, I think one one of our MPs were before they were in Aboriginal management, and before they were in our program. I think there was actually one. Uh, this sounds very familiar because <laughs> I think she was she was telling me about it. it oh, like really? Woman, yeah. I'll have to find out. I'll find out. Yeah, that's interesting. It's a good idea, though. It is. Oh, I got to get this off my screen. Business is definitely very interesting. I mean, like I say, it. Um, it just can take you in any, you know, it, it, it just enhances your background. But like you say, um, you know, what you're looking at in the Cousins program is the application process. I know what my brother and I spoke of, and we just spoke of this probably on our drive home yesterday from mm -hmm. the interior, is learning how to study, right? Yeah. Like that, that is a piece of it. Like, totally um, a piece of it. I think I was in my mid-20s when I returned back to university. But I told him, wouldn't it have been nice to have, you know, we have the, you know, the support groups within, yeah. you know, your, your program of study, but those pieces about how to support us, how to study effectively yeah. is, is, is something that, um, you know, because I'm a first generation, my parents went to residential school. Yes, she told us study, 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 but how do you effectively yeah. study, you know, yeah. those kinds of pieces? Well, they can't give you hints, right? No, and, that's uh, right. That's or so those they, they can't give you feedback because they haven't had that education, so they don't understand it. But that was my experience. Mm -hmm. And then time management, right? How do you manage your time and how do you manage going to school? Because lots of students have to work too, right? That's right. So how do you manage working, going to school, and, and all of that and still be successful? Yes, balance the family, balance the... Um, yeah. Um, you know, in our communities, we have, you know, students who are studying at university or college, and they're looking after their sister or their brother. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot more pressure for some of our students in terms of being successful and being able to complete, right? Because uh, they may be the caregiver for, for, for their mm -hmm. brother or sister. And that's not an atypical situation that we see. Right. Yes, it's it's the fine balance and staying well yourself to complete mm -hmm. the program and mm -hmm. yeah, staying engaged. Um, so, Ken just um, he has a couple statements here. Um, yeah. I very much appreciate the opportunity to listen to you speak, and thank you for answering my questions. So he says, going back to the Chinook cousin, grade nines are not usually the best audience for po post secondary presentations. <laughs> I could bring a crew of nines, but I'm wondering what is there in the activities that are appropriate for grade nine? So what I do is I would reach out to Miranda and uh, talk to her because I think Miranda can give you um, a much more of a, a blow by bow for the day and, and give you a sense of that. And uh, she's worth uh, just giving her a call. I think her contact details are on the website in terms of call her phone number. But I would recommend, you know, I'd, I'd encourage you to talk to Miranda and then uh, she can talk to you about what she's doing. And again, Miranda's past is she's an Aboriginal success officer. So that's what she did a lot. So we try to balance that off. But I know that the students have fun. So <laughs> <laughs> that's great. So is there any more questions or comments on Adobe Connect or on video conference? Yes. Um, our Northern Hub Committee is going to be hosting a Health Careers Fair. Now, would you be willing to come out for that up to Lillooet? When is it? Uh, February. 
I don't have a date yet, but it's in February. Yeah, we'd be willing to come out for it. Um, we just need enough uh, lead time so that we can plan it. Okay. I will certainly let our coordinator know. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any more questions on Adobe Connect? Well, Ken, that's been a very, I meant. <laughs> I was reading Ken and I'm looking at you. Yeah, Ken, it's been great. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Rick. <laughs> well, thank you for having oh, me here Rick, today. I appreciate it. It's been great. It's been very informative. And, and I have my contact details on the last uh, slide. slide. So feel free to call or email me. It's, uh, anybody can do that. I'm, I like getting emails and calls. So. And then we'll have the presentation posted on the website as well. So right. for anybody, if you would like the information and the content that was in there that they're able to download. And just so people know that this session is um, also recorded by through our video conference bridge that it will be available hopefully in the next three to four weeks online um, at our UBC Learning Circle. And so we have somebody typing here. Um, while they're typing, I'm actually just going to go through a few things here. Um, our upcoming learning circles, we're busy over the next couple of weeks. Um, unfortunately, we did have a second presenter for today. It was um, for the UBC Certificate in Aboriginal Healthcare Administration, um, the ALCAP program. And unfortunately, our presenter um, is at home sick today, so we send our best wishes to Carrie in her recovery today. Um, so we tomorrow we have the Aboriginal Midwifery as a Career Choice Program. They're also from um, the University of British Columbia and the Midwives Association of BC. Um, October 24th, we have the Empowerment Mindset, Motivating Indigenous Self-Reliance um, with Calvin Helene. That's an evening session from 7.30 to 9. That's a partnership with Simon Fraser University and the Student Association um, Department, or program, sorry. October 29th, we have our young man from Williams Lake, Indigenous role model Trevor Mack. Um, he was actually recently um, nominated for an Indispire Award, and he his um, uh, film that uh, the blanketing is actually um, a part of one of the Toronto film festivals. I don't know which film festival yeah. in Toronto, but just an up and coming amazing young man. And of course, he um, is very um, athletic on the, and he talks about his history and how he actually um, became a part of the Crash Bull, uh, what is it? Uh, Red Bull crashed ice. All right. So he he's just an amazing young man. He contacted me. We were chatting over Facebook, and I said, you know, we talked last year about you coming back to the, the youth circle, so he will be back October 29th before he goes to travel across to another country. So he's, been, he's going to be doing some traveling. So October 30th, we have the Aboriginal uh, Midwifery Program um, and the Midwives Association for a UBC Learning Circle. And then we're back with uh, Jerry Caston, Fantastic Foods for Babies and Moms. He did a fabulous presentation a couple weeks ago, um, at an in the kitchen style cooking program out at the university um, two weeks ago. So join us, he's a very dynamic presenter. So November 7th, we have the UBC Aboriginal Student Recruitment with Joseph Graham Nadine. Hensley and Melody uh, Markle. Um, and then November 12th, um, as a follow up in our series on the Indian Residential School um, Society and our partnership with them, we have the witness blanket um, and the presenters from that national organization. Um, and then November 13th, we have YouthGo and their presentation uh, around contraception. So November 20, 20th is Healthy Eating for Wellness, Chronic Disease Prevention and Management with Rebecca Savady. And again, now with the, with the changeover to the First Nations Health Authority from Health Canada, we have all our presentations now, which is really exciting, all under the First Nations Health Authority. And then Trauma-Informed Practice on November 26th, um, Trauma-Informed Practice with Indigenous Children 
and youth, and that will be with Natalie Clark. November 28th, we have Grief and Loss with the Balance Wheel. Um, we have Shirley David from the Indian Residential School Survivors um, Society. So as you can see, what we're trying to do is do series with different organizations and do future planning. So it's a series of sessions on any particular topic like Indian Residential School, um, just um, going from the what has happened um, bringing recognition and light to that led up to truth and reconciliation into the healing pieces of that and in the future we're also scheduling a, a men's um, dealing with grief and anxiety with Dave McCauley so there is a lot of future planning happening and we're always open to feedback we're open to any ideas that you may have any presenters that you would like to see on the UBC Learning Circle and definitely looking forward to developing a working relationship, mm. Rick. That'd be great. That um, it would be really nice for us to do some work together and um, see what kind of building bridges we can do together and um, using each other's expertise. And, Anytime. Um, so Ken has said, we will see you, see you in Nanaimo. Thanks again. <laughs> And health to you and the ones you love, all my relations. Thank you, Ken. Um, if there aren't any more comments or questions, that is our wrap for the day. Thank you very much again for joining us. Thank I appreciate that. We have a little get right here. Oh. Wow. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> so thank you. And we'll hopefully see you at Gathering Wisdom next week. Yes, all Maybe. right. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> yes. Okay, take care. Have a nice day. Have a nice day, everyone.